hello everyone welcome back to my channel and today I am going to explain Kirchhoff's equation and this equation tells us about the variation of the heat of the reaction with temperature and this is very important equation and but before that if you have not subscribed my channel then please do subscribe and also like and share my videos so let us start Kirchhoff's equation so friends heat of a chemical reaction varies with temperature if a chemical if a same chemical reaction is carried out at two different temperatures then the heat of the reaction will be different heat of the reaction by heat of the reaction we mean heat evolved or absorbed during a chemical reaction okay and suppose a reaction is carried out at temperature t1 and the heat change or the heat of that reaction is equal to delta h1 and the same reaction is carried out at a different temperature that is t2 then the heat of the reaction will be different it will be equal to delta h2 this is what i mean by the variation of the heat of the reaction with temperature and this variation was studied by the kirchhoffs so the equation derived is called as kirchhoffs equation further the heat of a chemical reaction also depends upon the conditions of pressure and volume if a reaction is carried out at constant pressure then the heat of the reaction is given by the change in enthalpy that is delta h and if a reaction is carried out at constant volume then the heat of a reaction is given by the change in internal energy that is delta u so friends we will have two different uh, kirchhoff's equations one will be for the reactions occurring at the constant pressure and the second one will be for the reactions occurring at the constant volume okay so first of all i am deriving uh, the kirchhoff's equation for the reactions occurring at constant pressure and to derive this relationship i have considered here a general reaction in which a is changing into b and let h b is the enthalpy of b and a is the uh, h a is the enthalpy of a okay then delta h will be equal to h b minus h a so this delta h is the heat of the reaction at constant pressure or we can say heat evolved or absorbed during this reaction at constant pressure now what we will do we will differentiate this equation number 1 with respect to temperature keeping the pressure constant then we will have that is curly delta h upon curly t at constant pressure and it will be equal to curly h b upon curly t at constant pressure minus curly h a upon curly t at constant pressure and let this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 1 okay and i have told you in one of the my videos when i discussed the heat capacities okay there i have told you that uh, this curly h upon curly t at constant pressure is equal to cp that is the molar heat capacity at constant pressure so this means that curly h a upon curly t at constant pressure will be equal to cp a where cp a is molar heat capacity of a at the given pressure or the constant pressure by given pressure we mean to say the pressure at which this reaction is taking place and curly hb upon curly t at constant pressure it will be equal to cpb so cpb is the molar heat capacity of b at the given pressure now what we will do we will substitute these values in the equation number 2 then we will have curly delta h upon curly t at constant pressure it will be equal to cp b because this term is equal to cp b minus cp a okay and this will be further equal to curly delta h upon curly t at constant pressure and it will be equal to delta cp delta by delta cp uh, delta cp is the uh, change in the heat capacity at constant pressure during this reaction and this is equal to the molar heat capacity of products minus the molar heat capacity of the reactant okay and let this is the equation number 3 further as i said this delta h is the heat of the reaction at constant pressure 
so this delta h is itself indicating that the reaction is occurring at constant pressure so this subscript p uh, will be dropped okay and i will write this uh, equation number 3 in another form that is d delta h upon dt now this uh, subscript p has been dropped and it, it will be equal to delta cp and let this is equation number 4 and this equation number 3 and equation number 3 and equation number 4 these are called as differential forms of the Kirchhoff's equations so these are the differential forms of Kirchhoff's equation and this equation tells us about the variation of the heat of the reaction at constant pressure with temperature or the rate of change of the heat of the reaction at constant pressure with temperature and it is equal to delta Cp that is the change in heat capacity at constant pressure during this reaction. Let us explain it, for, it further that if the temperature is changed by a very small amount dt degree Celsius then the change in the heat of the reaction is equal to d delta h understood and when the temperature is changed by the 1 degree Celsius then the change in the heat of the reaction will be equal to d delta h upon dt this means that this term that is d delta h upon dt it gives us the change in the heat of the reaction for the one degree change in the temperature okay and this is equal to what this is equal to the change in the heat capacity at constant pressure occurring during this reaction okay what this equation is for the very small change in temperature that is dt and if we want to calculate the change in the heat of the reaction uh, for a large temperature change then we have to derive the integrated form of this uh, Kirchhoff's equation so now let us derive the integrated form of uh, Kirchhoff's equation okay and to derive it I will rearrange this equation number 4 and it will be rearranged like this that d delta h it will be equal to delta cp into dt and let this is equation number 5 okay and now we will integrate this equation between the limits let at temperature t1 the heat of the reaction is delta h1 and when the temperature is changed to t2 then the heat of the reaction is equal to delta h2 okay so we will integrate the equation number 5 between these limits for temperature limits are from t1 to t2 and for heat of the reaction limits are delta h1 to delta h2 so let us integrate that is d delta h limits are integration of d delta h and limits are from delta h1 to delta h2 and it will be equal to delta cp integration of dt and limits are t1 to t2 okay so here we have kept this delta cp out of the sign of the integration because it is assumed that this change in the heat capacity at constant pressure okay it remains constant uh, during this temperature difference that is uh, temperature change that is from t1 to t2 and another reason could be that the same reaction is being carried out at the two different temperatures so the reactants and products are same okay so their heat capacities will remain constant this could be another reason of considering this delta cp as a constant okay now let us indicate further and we know that uh, this differential and integral they cancel each other so the integration of d delta h will be equal to delta h 
and likewise the integration of this dt will be equal to t so we have delta h and limits are from delta h1 to delta h2 and here we have delta cp into t and limits are from t1 to t2 now we will substitute the limits that is upper limit minus lower limit so we have delta h2 minus delta h1 and it will be equal to delta cp into t2 minus t1 okay and uh, this equation can be written as that this is equation number 6 delta from this equation we have delta h2 will be equal to delta h1 plus delta cp into t2 minus t1 and this equation is of uh, great use okay from this equation suppose if we know that is t1 and delta h1 okay that is we know temperature t1 and at this temperature we also know that the heat of the reaction is delta h1 both values are given and we are also given this change in heat capacity at constant pressure and we are given temperature t2 okay then we can calculate the heat of the reaction at temperature t2 with the help of this equation okay so let this is the equation number seven understood now the equation number six uh, can also be written like this that is delta h2 minus delta h1 divided by t2 minus t1 and it is equal to delta cp okay and this is the equation number eight and this equation is the integrated form of this Kirchhoff's equation okay now let us explain it further so here the temperature change is t2 minus t1 so when the temperature change is t2 minus t1 degree celsius then what is the change in the heat of the reaction then the change in the heat of the reaction is equal to delta h2 minus delta h1 understood and when the change in the temperature will be 1 degree celsius then the change in the heat of the reaction will be equal to delta h2 minus delta h1 divided by what t2 minus t1 understood so this means that this terms this term it gives us what the change in the heat of the reaction at constant pressure for what one degree change in temperature and it is equal to what change in the heat capacity at a constant pressure okay so let us write it that is the change in change in the heat of the reaction the change in the heat of the reaction okay at constant pressure for every one degree change in temperature is equal to is equal to what change in heat capacity at constant pressure pressure accompanying the reaction accompanying the reaction okay so this uh, this was the Kirchhoff's equations uh, for the reactions occurring at constant pressure okay now let us derive the Kirchhoff equation for the reactions occurring at a constant volume and the derivation will be quite similar okay so here 
when the reaction is carried out at constant volume. And for deriving this equation, we will again consider the same reaction that is A is changing into V. Understood? And we know that heat of the reaction at constant volume is equal to delta U. That is change in the internal energy. Okay. So let U B is the internal energy of B and U A is the internal energy of the A. Then delta U will be equal to U B minus U A and let this is equation number 1. And this delta U is the heat of the reaction at constant volume. Then as we did in the previous derivation, we will, we will def differentiate this equation with respect to temperature, keeping the volume constant. That is curl U upon curl, T, curl delta U. Okay. So curl delta U upon curl T at constant volume, it will be equal to curl UB upon curl T at constant volume volume minus curl u upon curl curl u a upon curl t at constant volume and let this is equation number two and further we know that this curl u upon curl t at constant volume it is equal to cv that is the molar heat capacity at constant volume this means that this curl u a upon curl t at constant volume it will be equal to what c v a that is molar heat capacity of a at constant volume and likewise this curl u b upon curl t it will be equal to c v b that is the molar heat capacity at constant volume for b and we will substitute these values in equation number 2 then curly delta u upon curly t at constant volume it will be equal to what cvv minus cva okay and this curly delta u upon curly t at constant volume it will be equal to what delta cv that is the change in heat capacity at constant volume so this is what this is the that this is equation number three again and uh, this is the differential form of the uh, kirchhoff's equation for the reaction occurring at constant volume okay and as we did previously we can derive the integrated form in the similar manner okay and in this case the integrated form of the equation will be it will be equal to delta u2 minus delta u1 divided by what t2 minus t1 and it will be equal to what delta cv so this will be what the integrated form understood so here also we can say that the change in the heat of the reaction at constant volume for one degree change in temperature is equal to what the change in the heat capacity at constant volume accompanying the chemical reaction understood so this is all about the Kirchhoff's equation and the variation of the heat of the reaction with the temperature okay and in my next video I'm going to discuss the bond energy and bond dissociation energy Keep watching my videos, like and share my videos and subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.